Dear students, we are having an overview of the cognitive school of thought, and we are uh, watching this video in connection to receive. We want you to see that what is the role of cognition in the cognitive school of thought and in the thinking process and knowledge acquisition. Uh, we are uh, now seeing different aspects of uh, cognition, and in this video, we will also have an overview of cognition as different aspects. So now let's see that what we are going to study in this uh, video. Remember this list in which I told you that cognition can be as uh, confusion, information processing, mapping, concept, attainment, and construction. In this video, we will focus only on uh, the cognition as construction. This picture explains that uh, cognition is a mental process which is highly influenced by the experiences, thought process, and senses. Recall this picture in which I told you that all these uh, aspects are necessary for cognitive process and uh, the thinking style of a person. Now, in this video, uh, where we are going to study cognition as construction, we will focus on only on the senses. Now, uh, here, these senses does not only mean the five senses we are uh, going to study, but also the sense-making style of a person. So let's have an overview that what is uh, called cognition as construction. Construction is uh, this uh, view strategy as the interpretation based on the cognition as construction. I, as I have already told you in a previous video, that reality can be different for someone and uh, that someone uh, can realize something which is imaginary for someone. And uh, there is a difference between the construction of the reality. So reality is uh, usually seen in the two parts, which is objective and subjective. So there are uh, two wings uh, of discussion in, uh, the, uh, in the connection to the reality. One wing is objective wing, another is a subjective wing. One by one, we will see that what is objective uh, wing uh, is saying and what is subjective wing is saying. Objective wing says that for an objectivist, a particular statement can be true for one person and false for another only when there is a radical difference in the relevant perceptual evidence available to the two people. This is a little difficult for you, but uh, the focus uh, area is the evidence. It means that if the evidence is available, that thing can be uh, the true or false for one person or more than one per people. So let's explain with the help of this picture. There are four objects here and these are countable and there is evidence available for this as well. So no one can deny, no one can say that these are three or these are five. This is objective reality. It means that this is supported by certain evidence and every person will uh, be agreed that these are four objects here, and uh, these cannot be denied from any evidence in the world. So this is the objectivity. Here it is said that reality is objective, it is measurable, and it is evident from, and it can be analyzed, it can be uh, well thought, it can be counted, it can be uh, observable. So this is the objective wing. Uh, about the reality. The subjective wing says that for a subjectivist, a particular statement can be true for one person and false for another person based solely on one's mental choices, subjective processing or emotions. This is very important thing here. In the last uh, slide where we saw objective wing, we had uh, a statement which was saying that the evidence should be there. While here we are talking about the mental choices, subjective processing or emotions. Now, uh, we have seen in the previous videos that mental choices, mental uh, perceptions, mental maps, mental schemas are different in every person. So there are certain people who create shared meanings and construct their own reality. But uh, this is not possible for every person to have certain kind of thinking and copying thinking of another person. So every person has mental, different mental choice, has different mental map, has different mental schema. So this is about the subjectivity of thing, which is different for everyone. So let's have an example. I searched uh, for the word beauty on the internet and I found these multiple pictures. This is the subjective thing. It means that for someone, beauty can be a beautiful cottage. It can be a kid. It can be a ladybird. Or it can be anything of which can a person can define this as a beauty for that person. It means that this 
depend upon the mental model mental schema of the beauty the characteristics a person associate with the word beauty it means that so this is quite subjective for a person this is quite different for a person this no two persons will agree on uh, this the subjectivity of this thing they have certain characteristics certain features associated with word beauty similar is the case with those people who are uh, having different kind of uh, positions in an organization and who are the scene makers of uh, the organization they may have a subjective choice subjective features attached to certain things and they may take different decisions in the organization so uh, this is all about the subjective and objective wing of uh, the or uh, the reality now let's have an overview that uh, what is objectivity and subjectivity in the organizational environment uh, we have three points here to discuss number one is the objective environment the perceived environment and the enacted environment now we will see one by one that what are these all about and this is uh, the relationship of objectivity subjectivity uh, with the organizational environment the objective environment assumes that an organization is embedded within an environment that has external and independent existence uh, similarly uh, which we have uh, told you that uh, we have some certain evidence we have certain measurable uh, concepts and aspects associated with certain thing uh, about the objectivity of reality so the objective environment is the only thing uh, which assumes that the organization is embedded in the environment and it has its own independent reality let's see a picture in which it is very clear that there is a plant this is uh, inside the environment uh, but this it has its own representation it has an its own uh, personality it has its own uh, uh, existence so no one can deny this existence and uh, this, there is an evidence that this is a plant no one can say that this is not a plant so it has its own existence it is evident from this thing so this is an objective environment where the re reality of the organization and its environment is there and that is measurable and that is evident and no one can deny it now the difficult question comes that what is the perceived environment uh, this perceived environment assumes that strategies are trapped by bounded rationality and make strategies how they perceive the environment this is the important thing to discuss here that strategists perceive the environment according to their own understanding their own mental maps and their own mental schemas and they are again bounded by the bounded rationality which uh, which i have already told you that we have many multiple kind of information but uh, in order to cope with this multiple complex kind and diverse kind of information we try to only process that information which is necessary so we are usually bounded uh, we have uh, bounded rationality which means that we need to take the scenes only that are evident that are necessary uh, for that time so this is about the perceived environment which means that how the strategist actually assume that what is the environment the, their perception is very important and their decision making so the perception about the environment is very important so let's have uh, an overview with the help of an example with the help of a picture this is the uh, you have learned about birds eye view which is this thing which gives you a holistic viewpoint and which gives you a broader picture it tells you that there are multiple buildings and uh, there you are you may have an aerial view you may see that uh, how these buildings can be seen from uh, when you are taking a birds eye view but uh, you may not not have heard about the worms eye view where you are seeing the these watching these uh, buildings from down now you can see that your viewpoint while you are uh, watching these buildings from having a bird eye view is quite different while having a worm's eye view so this is about the perception now uh, for a worm for a person who is perceiving these uh, uh, buildings from downwards is quite different from uh, those people who are having a viewpoint from upward so that is that is also about the organization whatever we you are perceiving you will be trying to make the strategies according to your viewpoint if the person is making strategy from here it will be quite different from a person who is taking making the strategies from here so this is about the perception of the environment that is inside the 
person's mind inside the strategist mind so this is also very important and this is also related to the subjectivity third is an enacted environment and we need to understand it uh, fully this is a difficult concept it assumes that what people refer to as their environment is generated by human actions and is accompanying intellectual efforts to make sense out of their actions so it assumes that reality is not always out there it is not always objective uh, which is uh, which means that we cannot measure always measure it and the second uh, it also denies the second view that the it is about the perception of something it's uh, the enacted environment uh, viewpoint says that uh, the environment is what we label it it means that first of all we have certain characteristics in our mind we have certain mental maps and models and when then we try to label it then we try to register it according to uh, the certain characteristics in our mind and that is all about the actions that is all about the strategy so it mean that is all about the reality in the mind of a person it totally denies the objectivity it also denies the subjectivity total subjectivity which means that perception it tells us that this is about the uh, mental maps and models uh, which are inside our mind and how we label them now you can uh, have an uh, holistic view of this picture and you can come up with a third view in which you can say that uh, there is a picture in which there are certain objects and one person is is assuming that these are four objects and one, another person is assuming these are three while they are these are this is a optical illusion and it can be termed as three or it can be termed as four so no one is wrong now you are using your own senses your own mental models of elliptical illusion and uh, you are saying that this this is an illusion in which uh, anyone can be right and no one is wrong over here so this is about the enacted environment and how you create meanings of certain thing and how you come up with a new mental model and a schema that is that may be wrong that may be right and that may deny all the existing procedures and processes and existing mental models and schemas and that may also uh, confirm all existing mental models and schemas so how you create a new thing is important thing in strategic management and is this cognitive school of thought so in while concluding remarks on the uh, uh, cognition as construction this is very important to note here that there are certain objective realities which says that uh, reality is out there and that can be measured and that is evident uh, from certain uh, proofs so that can be proved by certain thing but uh, sometimes the reality is subjective and it is not only uh, in the mind of a person and it can be confirmed by the mental maps and mental schemas of a strategist or the person while taking the scene but it is sometimes created by a strategist and that is an important thing then how it is created by a strategist inside the mind while taking the scene and this may Uh, deny the total objective uh, wing and this may also deny the total subjective wing and this uh, creates a central or an other uh, kind of situation where a person creates his own reality that is related to a particular situation so it tells us that how this cognitive school of thought and uh, in cognition as construction tells us that while uh, the mental process that Uh, is used for acquisition of knowledge and the storing of knowledge and making the decisions how this construction of reality and mental map construction concept attainment plays its role in strategy making